Hello everyone and welcome back to another Live at Five. I am your host, Kevin Adkison, Associate Curator with the Cranbrook Center for Collections and Research. And it is a beautiful day here in Bloomfield Hills as the sun is shining, it's 80 degrees, clouds in the skies, leaves on the bushes, almost leaves on the trees. And I thought today would be a great day uh, to take a little walk down Academy Way. Now, our very first Live at Five over a year ago was about Carl Millis's sculptures at uh, Cranbrook Art Museum around the fountain. So if you want to see that Live at Five, I've not rewatched it. Who knows what I was like a year ago? Uh, shorter, I think. But today I want to focus on the Carl Millis sculptures that are situated along Academy Way near his house. And these are the sculptures that because they are stone, we keep them wrapped from about October until this time of year. Uh, because as you might imagine, uh, the freeze-thaw cycle on a stone sculpture would be like Carl Millis coming back to life and taking a chisel and just destroying his own sculpture. So as you drive up and down or walk up and down Academy Way all winter, you have to look at the sort of unfortunate teal covers. I have some exciting news coming up about those covers. Uh, hopefully next winter we'll be seeing some student designed and manufactured covers. But today I have pulled the covers off and I thought what better time to talk about the Carl Millis sculptures now that they have been awakened. And I want to start right here in the middle of Academy Way. The two sculptures that I'll talk about first are Sleeping Pan and Sleeping Fawn from 1928, uh, carved out of white marble. This view is showing you Carl Millis's uh, main studio at Cranbrook. So in Carl Millis's time, uh, it runs over 80 feet end to end, and then it was 40 feet tall. So the ground floor is lower than these bushes, and it went clear up to the rafters. Today, this is the sculpture department, as well as the Cranbrook Woodshop, and what was one room in Millis's day is now three separate rooms. Perhaps a future Live at Five will take us into his studios. Uh, opposite his main studio, he had his secondary studio for small sculptures and plaster modeling, and then he had his home studio attached to his house. So he did have three studios and then his five bedroom, 5,000 square foot home and studio. And in front of these houses, since about 1932, have been the Sleeping Pan and Sleeping Fawn. Now here we can see the half man, half goat, uh, that is Pan. And Pan was the god, or is the god, of shepherds, of flocks, of hunting, uh, and also the god of music. And Pan is very often associated with springtime and with fertility. And so I think that it's appropriate that Pan has been sleeping under his cover for the past uh, winter. And now I have awakened or, or prepared to awaken him to come see spring. Now you can see Pan's face here with his uh, sort of bulbous nose and then he has a human torso and a human face, but he does have goat horns coming out. And then he sort of crossed his arms laying on this bed of hay. And we can see down here that he transitions to having the furry uh, goat legs with the goat uh, cloven hooves as well. And so here you can see his hooves popping out. Now, one thing that I started to notice and admire more about Millis's work is how he joins his sculptural figures to their pedestals. In this case, the pedestal is also the garden wall. So this is an Aelial Sarnen design pedestal slash wall. Uh, but the transition into this sort of basket for the sleeping pan has this wonderfully sculptural shape uh, of this sort of long arch or arc. And then it comes to the back and it has this sort of rounded U shape. And the whole thing floats on this uh, almost sort of hidden base. And this was carved, according to Millis, by his own hand. 
unlike so many of our bronzes, Sleeping Pan and Sleeping Fawn are singular to this location. So they don't exist at Millis Garden in Sweden, nor did he produce these serially. If we look down at the base, we can see his cipher or his signature. Uh, you can see the C here and then the M for Millis. Now, the sleeping fawn uh, represents, again, uh, the sort of idea of spring and fertility, wakening of the earth, uh, but it is just a fawn. We don't have another god on this side of the podium. And so the fawn is laying, and Millis's sculptures, the more you study them, he loves contorting them into these uh, very dramatic positions. And he writes that he's inspired uh, by Asian art in the way that uh, sort of the flatness of Chinese representations of animals can cause them to, to appear to be running or to be uh, moving, and the sort of emotions that you can get by bending animals into possibly not anatomically um, traditional depictions. I don't think it's anatomically incorrect. I think a, a sleeping fawn could do this, but Millis really begins to exaggerate the scale of the body to the neck to the legs for artistic effect. Now, these have been uncovered. The Forsythia just came out over the weekend. And as I walk away, we'll get a better view of how these two sculptures frame the pathway between Millis's studios and then also frame the view of the long garden wall. Um, you'll see that Fleur Detroit has provided planters along the walk now. But had you been here in the 1930s, you actually would have seen more Millis sculptures along this wall. At Sarnen House, there were two running deer on display, and at the very end of the street, there were the two bronze bulls. Those sculptures are still here on campus, but they are in different locations. And I do know from past Live at Five experience that it is a bit of a black hole walking up and down, so if I disconnect, please be patient. I'll be right back online uh, as I suffer from a lack of cell service and a lack of outdoor Wi-Fi. So our next sculpture that was just uncovered after a winter's sleep is the running horse from 1929. And this sculpture is situated outside of dorm two, the former women's dormitory. And it has this really beautiful uh, base designed or attributed to Aelil Saarinen. And the running horse, uh, Millis, for whatever reason, when he writes about all of the sculptures at Cranbrook, he says, um, this is not a portrait of the war. I'm not sure who claimed that it was a portrait of the war, but he is uh, uh, clear to note that it's not war related, but is in fact a portrait of the artist. It's Millis running without a rider. Uh, and so this is a horse that is a self-portrait of the artist. And again, it is carved in the same marble that Pan and Fawn are in. And so all of our stone sculptures remain covered throughout the winter uh, in order to keep water out of them. And this one in particular, I always like uncovering because it's so dramatically different uh, from the very large green tarp covering it to now showing the horse with this sort of agonized face and then this great muscular neck and mane and then the way that Millis really creates this dynamic movement of the horse sort of leaping across this billowing cloud of marble. And what I love about the placement of this sculpture, which has been here since 1936, 1938, when the building was completed, uh, and the way that it sort of occupies the blank space of this building. So if we step back and look at the facade, you can see that we go from the square one foot glass block windows to these unusual square bricks that are laid out in a nine square grid, to then the grid of the windows on this side of the dormitory, which you'll notice are connected by turning the bricks on headers and stretchers. Uh, in order to create this larger meta uh, grid. 
and then the doorway entrance sequence, and then there is just this great blank wall on which the running horse, the portrait of Millis, is asymmetrically placed and balanced on that beautiful sculptural limestone pedestal. Now, in previous Live at Fives, I have discussed the Jonah Fountain, though I don't remember if I did that on Instagram or on Facebook. So we won't do a full tour of the Jonah Fountain over here, but as the spring weather is so beautiful and I promised a walking tour of Academy Way, we will head down to the Life Earn, uh, feature what at this point in our tour you can sort of see as becoming a run. I'm sure I could solve this by further research, uh, but it's unclear to me which comes first, Carl Millis making handles in sort of concentric circles repeating at different angles, or Aliel Saarinen doing the same thing, because it both is, it's part of both men's uh, design vocabulary. And so these sea life urns then lead to Carl Millis's only sculpture that is made at Cranbrook for Cranbrook. So he does design the Orpheus Fountain here at Cranbrook, uh, but he is sculpting that for its uh, main location in Stockholm, and then Cranbrook simply gets an addition of the Orpheus Fountain. The Jonah Fountain is made here for Kingswood. It's considered to be too large for Kingswood, and so it is made uh, to sit on this large pedestal overlooking the Jonah pools. We have Jonah and the whale at top, and then below it is the complete story of Jonah uh, from uh, the Lord sort of calling. Here we have the hand of God, uh, and then down here we see Jonah, but Lord, I'll not preach to these people. And then we get the whole Bible story uh, along with little illustrations like the running hounds of Diana, which are over at the boys' school. Uh, so they reappear here uh, to now Jonah is boarding the ship to escape the Lord's command to go and preach to the people, uh, to the sort of stormy sea and Jonah getting tossed out. And now we see the arrival of the big fish coming to consume Jonah. And then finally he is headed to preach the Lord's message, and we see Jonah looking very dramatic uh, here. I should mention that this part of the story we missed, we skipped over. And then here is the city of Nineveh, and finally uh, Jonah going to sleep under the gourd leaf. So that is the Jonah Fountain, which of course overlooks the Jonah Pool which the red buds are just starting to come out. Now, as we continue along, uh, I do want to head down to the other end of the street. Hopefully we stay connected as we walk. If you're in Michigan, it is an absolute beautiful day to come out and to tour, walk around the campus. School is back in session, so after a two-week lull. There's life again uh, here on the Academy Way. And of course, our view of the museum off to the left, and then down the row of trees. So if you're thinking to yourself, between the blog, the Instagram, the Facebooks, all the Live at Fives, you're getting a lot of Carl Millis content. That is because we are revving up for our annual fundraiser. This will be our third house party fundraiser. It's going to be all virtual, and the uh, event is being coordinated with Millis Garden in Sweden. And so a global house party at Cranbrook and Millis Garden is going to be a celebration of all things Cranbrook and Sweden, focusing on the work of Carl Millis and his life spent teaching here at Cranbrook, but it will also tell the story of other Swedish immigrant artists like Sve Klein, Tor Berglund, uh, Maya Anderson Virda, Lillian Holm, they'll all make appearances in our uh, event on May 22nd. Now there are a lot of ways to join a house party at Cranbrook. It is virtual, so if you are watching this, you can watch the fundraiser. And 
ticket levels are uh, at a range of prices. It is our fundraiser, so whatever you can do to support us is certainly going to help. Uh, and we have different ticket packages that are described online, and they range from $50 to join us for the fundraiser and to watch the main event, which is a 45-minute film uh, written and directed by yours truly. Terrifying. Um, but it is shaping up to be something really quite incredible. For a little bit, a significant bit more money, uh, you can join us at the patron level and you can help support the work of the center, the work that we do year round, teaching and preserving and uh, researching, maintaining all of Cranbrook's sculptures. And at the patron level, you're going to get a dinner delivered to you if you're in the uh, Southeast Michigan region. It will be a Swedish smorgasbord. Uh, and then the uh, sponsorships go on up from there. And if you're interested in a patron level sponsorship, reach out to me on Facebook or reach out to our director, Greg Whitkop, and we can talk about all of the different benefits and the way that your uh, support will really help the center. Now, the fundraiser at the highest level, you'll be able to actually experience the fundraiser and our film and Swedish dinner here at Carl Millis's house. And so on Saturday, May 22nd, uh, 10 of you could be here, uh, you and nine of your friends, really. Uh, it is limited to just one uh, person at that highest level sponsorship. My planter, which is coming in full bloom, and a uh, not Carl Millis bunny rabbit, that is Target Corporation. So if that sounds interesting, I encourage you to head over to center.cranbrook.edu and sign up for the global house party at Cranbrook and Millis Garden. I've been really deep in the archives looking at old footage, uh, video of George and Ellen Booth at Millis Garden, uh, you know, the Millis is hanging out in their sculpture studio, and all of this archival research and archival footage and images will be transformed into hopefully a very compelling 45-minute documentary. And not only the archival images will be used, but we'll also be using new drone footage uh, and new high-resolution color video footage of all of the Cranbrook Millis sculptures, but also all of the Swedish Millis sculptures. And so there'll be a large portion of the event coming from Stockholm, from Millis Garden, and then also portions of the event coming from uh, the Swedish ambassador in Washington, D.C. It's going to be a great night, and I encourage all of you to sign up today at whatever level you can help to support. Now, our last Millis on Academy Way is the Triton with uh, Horn, and, or Triton with Shell of 1918. And this is actually the Millis sculpture that kicks off one's visit to Cranbrook if you come through our original gates on Lone Pine Road. It's also the Millis sculpture that kicked off the relationship between George Booth and a, uh, uh, Carl Millis. So this, uh, the Triton with Shell is a gift from Carl Millis to George Booth. George Booth thought that was way too generous. He insisted on paying for it. When Millis refused, uh, George Booth then decided that he would pay for uh, the construction of the base, the pedestal. And so this is an example of a pedestal uh, sculpture base designed by Carl Millis for Carl Millis's sculpture. And it has different sea creatures swimming around on this beautiful black stone. Now, a triton, which there are tritons all over Millis's work and all over Cranbrook's campus, tritons are, uh, are triton is it the son of Poseidon, and he usually carries a trident, though I don't think we have any tridents here at Cranbrook, and we see that our triton has a conch trumpet, and of course it will soon be spraying water up and reflecting back down on himself. Now this is 1918, the tritons that are by the museum are about a decade later, and you'll see that this triton actually has more of a sort of traditional sculptural form. He's much less abstracted, than the Tritons that would come a decade later. And I think we see the influence of Millis's great teacher, Auguste Rodin, here uh, even more clearly than the later sort of higher, uh, more art deco sculptures of Carl Millis. He is half man and half 
uh, uh, fish, and so he has two sort of uh, dolphin tails, almost like a mermaid, merman, but not quite. He also has hair that become little spiraling shells, and then his trumpet sort of praising the sky, saying winter has finally ended here in Michigan. Of course, all of these Carl Millis sculptures will soon be uh, scrubbed and cleaned by Venus Bronze Works of Detroit, and Giorgio and his team will come out and they will do hot wax treatment using a flamethrower and blocks of wax, uh, or they'll uh, use different cleaning techniques based on the finish of the bronze. And so once that happens, we can fill up the fountains. It will have been over a year since the fountains last had water in them in October of 2019. So I know everyone is super excited to see the Carl Millis sculptures again activated by water. So I think that is all that we'll cover today on our little walking tour of Carl Millis's work along Academy Way. As we continue to rev up towards the fundraiser, I'll continue to bring you stories of Cranbrook and Sweden. And I hope that uh, these Live at Fives have been a pleasure for you over the past year and that you will scrounge around your couch cushions and see what sort of funds you can come up with to continue to allow me to uh, have a job by continuing to fund the center. Uh, we appreciate any level that you can join to support, and we, of course, want to acknowledge all of the donors who have already committed, all of the center committee members uh, who have come in with very generous donations for a global house party at Cranbrook and Millis Garden. And you can see a complete list of those uh, patrons and sponsors, business sponsors as well on the uh, Cranbrook Center website, center.cranbrook.edu. I'll leave you with a look at the Naiad with fishes, also of 1918, the same year as the Triton with shells. Uh, Naiad is a freshwater nymph who uh, is immortal as long as her water source remains. And so uh, you can find naiads on streams, on springs, on uh, freshwater lakes. You can also have fountain naiads, which this one is. But apparently, if there's no water in the fountain, the naiad loses her immortality and dies. So here's best of luck that uh, they can last for 18 months without water because it's been a minute since our uh, naiad with fishes actually was spraying water out of those fishes with her wonderful curly q fish legs and then the curly q fish hair thank you so much for joining me for another live at five i'll be back next wednesday for another live at five if you watched us on instagram thank you for a year of doing that but we are going down to just one live at five a week and so i'll only be here on facebook for uh, uh going forward until next time send me messages if you have questions or requests and i will look forward to seeing all of you at our fundraiser on may 22nd Goodbye.